Can you break down what are the fundamental differences among day trading, swing trading, and of course, the long time trading and investing? Sure, Alicia, and thanks for having me. Um, so essentially, day trading is what it sounds like, uh, typically buying and selling securities within a day's trading window. Uh, swing trading has a slightly longer time horizon where you may be buying and selling securities over a few days or a few weeks. And then long term investing would be holding securities for at least a year's time. And let's talk about risks for the three here, right? If I had to kind of put them on a spectrum, uh, you know, I've obviously discerned that day trading is probably on the riskier side to long term investing, investing being on the less risky side. But can you break down individual risks associated with each strategy? Sure. Uh, so you hit the nail on the head. Absolutely. Basically, the less time that you have in this, the more risk there is. Um, if you just talk about, you know, investing in the S&P, for example, over a one day period, you have about a 50 50 shot of making a positive return. If we look at that over a year's period of holding an investment, now it's about a 75 percent chance of making a positive return. And over a 20 year period, you have a 100 percent chance of a positive return on your money. So there are certainly more inherent risks with uh, day trading and swing, swing trading just based on the lack of time that you're in. Um, there's other factors to consider, um, like capital's gain, capital gains taxes. Let's say that you're doing really well at swing trading or day trading. Um, unfortunately, the gains on those, your profits are going to be taxed at your ordinary income rates instead of more favorable uh, long-term capital gains rates. I'm going to get a little bit more on capital gains in a moment, but I want to kind of break this down in short term and long term trading. You know, what type of companies or industries do traders typically target uh, for short term trading? You're definitely going to want to target bigger names on bigger markets. For example, you're not going to be trading, you know, penny stocks or something over the counter. Um, and I, I suspect you're probably trading a lot of bigger names that are maybe in the news or making more headlines where there's there's more um, action and more talked about with these names where you can potentially buy in at one price, you know, early in the day and look to sell out at a profit later in the day. Just just more pricing action on those names. Perfect. Now, getting back to kind of capital gains tax, you started to touch on this here. And I think this is so important for traders and investors to really understand what are the capital gain tax implications uh, in the U.S. for short term traders versus long term trades? So they can be huge. Um, basically, if you hold an investment for less than a year where you buy it and then sell it within a year's time, you're now those profits or those gains are taxed at your ordinary income rates. So let's just say you have an individual making one hundred and sixty five thousand dollars a year. Their tax bracket is the thirty two percent bracket. If they hold that for longer than a year, they're only taxed at 15 percent versus selling out within that year where now they're taxed at thirty two percent. So it can really make a huge difference. Um, as far as you know, your, your take home profits at the end of the day. Yeah. All right. So during times of high market volatility, what do you suggest the type of strategies uh, that can be utilized to mitigate some of the risk? Really want to try and block out all the noise. Uh, it's so difficult, you know, when you when you read the news sometimes and it seems like the, the sky is falling or, you know, everything's going to hell, excuse me. Um, but really, you just want to block out the noise, focus on your long term goals and really think about, you know, what your objectives are. And, and stick to that and really, um, you know, stay in for, for the long run, whether that's, you know, through the end of the trading day or uh, or for the long term investors. Yeah, we know emotional discipline is usually one of the hardest things for even traders or investors uh, to master here. So, you know, with that, what advice do you have for someone trying to figure out which strategy is best and trying to manage through that kind of, you know, emotional discipline? Well, I really think it starts with with your goals and what your ultimate objectives are and really trying to take the emotion out of it as much as possible. Um, it's always good to stick to target allocations and sort of have have target percentages or target numbers for where you want to get to as whether it's, you know, I want this investment to be a certain allocation of my overall portfolio. And if it's going above that, I'll look to take profits or, you know, I want to have so much money that I'm going to use to to sort of speculate with and invest with. And I know that if if it gets rough and I'm under where I think I'm not going to just go flooding it back and, and act purely on emotion, because that's really where, you know, people can get hurt. Um, so you really just want to try and be as objective as possible and really have a long term view. Yeah, this is one of those segments that people should save, watch, let it soak in, maybe watch it a few times or replay it, uh, you know, when they're continuing to develop their strategy. Really appreciate you having having you here. Thank you so much, Aaron Dessen, financial advisor at Payne Capital Management.